I, I have something really interesting for you tonight. It's going to be a really great comparison between cold and hot reading. These are two very, very experienced mediums, Thomas John and Susan, Suzanne Northrup. And they are, have done thousands of readings. And Suzanne has been around for generations and in this mediumship role. If you want to learn a little bit more about Suzanne, I will put a link in the description of this video. Um, her, uh, she's very different the way she does readings. She's cold reading. And that means somebody does not have information ahead of time but they use generalities or they follow like specific trends or um, they're just very fast talkers. They, they have, you know, come and go really quickly with the way they do things. And Suzanne's very good at it in this clip. I'm going to show you. This is a reading that was done October, October 1st, 2020. It was a Zoom reading. There's a lot of people on the screen. Um, I have done other clips other videos of clips from this event and you'll find them on my channel psychics explained and please if you do like this kind of um, information of how how mediumship appears to look like it's real please subscribe to my channel i am trying really hard to put out very well researched uh, videos with breaking this down it's it's a lot of work and i really appreciate uh, the comments that i get from people and the likes and the shares I try to respond to all my comments and it is a lot of work. I enjoy it, but it is a lot of work to research it. This has been sitting here on my desk for hours as I've been going through and fussing with it. So hopefully we're going to get through this. It does take me a while to go through a video, even though if I have the clips all, all nice and everything for you pretty, but it just, there's a lot to say. So this is mediumship with a hot reading at the end. So I think it's going to be a really interesting contrast. Also, I um, there's a lot to understand about the sitters because the reaction of the sitters. I've been doing this for a while, and I learn new things all the time. And I see something I see something different all the time. And from the comments that I get after one of these videos, you see things sometimes that I don't see, and I or you know you notice something and you see it in a different way than I do, and I find that really interesting. But to the sitters, these are two sisters, um, they're, I think, when they leave this reading that I'm going to show you, it's a nine-minute reading. Well, the reading's probably like seven minutes, but there's a preamble at the beginning that I, I want to include to be complete. And I think that these sisters are going to leave this event thinking that they had the most amazing reading ever. And I think this is typical of most people who go see psychics because you're very emotionally charged to want to get good reading. You've been there for a while watching other people getting readings. This is a Zoom reading, a group reading with you know multiple people on the screen. They paid money. They've waited a long time. Their anticipation is very high. They're, you know, they're they believe that mediumship and communication with the dead is real. So it's a very emotional thing. And I have a feeling these women are going to leave this place and go, oh man, these guys were accurate. So breaking it down the way I'm going to break it down, I think this is extremely important because people need to understand how this appears to look real um, when you're going to see after I've broken it down how all the flaws, but I don't think even people who, who understand that mediumship isn't real, I don't think that they would, I don't think they would see it the way I'm going to. And I, I'm curious if you guys agree. All right. So I've broken this down into, Alan, that's 16 sec, sec, 16 sessions, six, six, 16 clips. So we're going to get through it. I hope you guys are going to be um, hanging in there with me. Like I said, this is, I find it interesting and I hope you do too. Um, the things I do need to let you know ahead of time is that 
Um, this is a gallery screen where everybody's on here. I do not have the people's names of the people who were on the Zoom event, but one of my team members, one of my awesome team members attended this in real person, you know, in, in live and was able to get all the people's names that are read on this video. I'm only going to show you one reading in this specific video, but I have more videos out there as well. Um, everybody's going to be pixelated except for Thomas John, his assistant, and Suzanne Northup. Everybody else is pixelated. And I did that to protect the privacy, um, even though, you know, you would probably not have a clue who these people are. Another thing that you should keep in mind is that on the day of this event, people are chatting over Zoom. I have no contact. I have no way of seeing that the 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 chat i don't have that but the psychics do have that so they're you know real time they're chatting with each other and they can see the other people chatting with each other so it's very likely that it's possible some of these people may give information uh, reveal information that the psychic is able to pull up because they were talking about it and so but you and i watching this video three years later or more we don't know what was said, but it could have been very clearly said in their chat. So let's dive right in. Ready? Buckle up, buttercup. This should be interesting. So I got somebody in front of me here, Thomas. Okay. So we'll we'll do a share on this one if we, if we want. Uh, I'm looking at, at Ashley. Okay. I was looking at her. You were looking at Ashley. Um... Yep, I was looking. She was going to be my next person, actually. Yeah, well, I beat you ahead of it. Okay, so, um, so I just want to, to, to. Are they unmuted yet? What do you need? Sorry, I just got Cindy. It looks like Ashley, or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to go to her net, like I'm like, like yeah. So she, we're in sync. We're the same program here. Okay. So I wanted to point out there that Thomas John is saying. I was going to go to her next. She's somebody I was looking into. And I want you guys to be aware. You darn well bet he was looking into them. And so you can see his eyes moving a lot. He's he's still scrolling through things as, as this is going on. He's actively engaged with the screens and looking at screens and looking at things. Um, so I I think he definitely is is engaged in Ashley was a good choice. Her name is on the screen. You can't see it. I can't see it, but it was on the screen when this was going on. I have removed, they said her last name a couple times and I just removed it in this clip. So, so you don't know what it is, but I can tell you that it is a name that is unusual enough that it, when I went onto Facebook, to look up her Facebook page, it gave me like three different people by this name. And I just looked at the first one. No, not that one. Looked at the second one. No, it's not her. Looked at the third one. That's her. I mean, because I can see what she looks like, right? You can't see her right now because she's pixelated, but it was obvious to me who she is. So for Thomas John, who knows ahead of time, people are going to be there because they be buy a ticket. Yeah, and he's also had all this time to look at her name on the screen and look and see who he was going to pick next. And thirdly, a lot of the times Thomas John will post on Facebook, I'm going to be doing this on October 1st. Don't forget to sign up for the event. And people will say, I'll be there. Oh, I'm so excited, which is leaving their Facebook page right there for him to just click on and boom, he's onto their Facebook page. So He's had plenty of time to look up these people's um, information. So that's hot reading. But we're going to start off with cold reading. So I have removed um, where they talk about her last name. Let's go back. Ms. Harris, wave your hand. Yes? Good. Right. Okay. So like, are you guys like sisters or something like that or close friends or one of those? Sister. Okay, so I mentioned, I just wanted to mention really quickly that that was really odd. And you'll see that the, a lot of the mediums, especially these cold breathing mediums, they asked a lot of questions. And they should really be asking a lot of questions so they should know. And something as specific as that, it went by really fast. 
Um, Suzanne does not hot read. I, I at least I don't think I've ever caught her hot reading. She's a cold reader. She's been doing it old school like this forever. So there, there's no real reason for her to hot read. Whether she knows Thomas John hot reads or not, I don't know. Um, she says, here's what she says. Are you close friends or sisters or something? And I'm thinking, shouldn't you know? <laughs> so obviously that wasn't something she knew. So that's a big miss. There, and you got these two women sitting there on the screen they're probably 35 40 years old or somewhere around there 30 ish 30 ish years old and there's another person on the side that you can't really see you can see their arm a little bit at least i can see it but i i know you can't see it but there is a third person there which makes this next part irrelevant okay got it all right so i'm going to just go quick first and then i'll let thomas fall in here so is this a third of you guys is there a third of you guys? Yeah. Okay. Is that third person here? I'm here, but our third sister is not. Right. That's what I mean by the third. <laughs> <laughs> the third of you means an additional sibling. Because yeah. yeah. you know, because they're telling me they're we're the we were the three sisters. Okay. So who's in the middle, please? Me. Okay. And so she must be. Is she she's not literally the baby, is she? Yeah. Okay. Because she really pushes her way in through here, and she's a pistol and a half. Because she says, "Well, you know, I'm better looking than the both of you guys." I just just giving you an FYI on that. All right, so so she we, she definitely is wants to hog hog the thing now. But Mama's still here, right? Yeah. Okay. So when she comes through, I hear double sounds, and the only time I hear double sounds is somebody spurs to the middle name is passed down. So is she talking about hers or your mom, please? It's got to be an aunt or a grandmother on her side. It's got to be your aunt or your grandmother on your mom's side. And grandma on the mom's side? Yes, there's there's two sounds. So either grandma's name was passed down to somebody's middle name. Oh, or grandma's name. I, I have my grandma's name as my middle name. Got it. Thank you. That's how they let me know that they're coming through. So she's coming through with your sister, all right? And our no, but our sister is alive. Right, but I'm saying she's she's talking about coming connected to your sister. Okay. Okay? But the grandmother's passed, right? Yeah. And mom? She's here. Did you catch all that? Did you have the same impression that I had whenever I saw it, that this woman thinks that the third sister is dead? And the sister is not dead. So that was a huge miss. So Suzanne immediately goes to, there are three sisters. Well, first she says there's a third. There's a third. And they said, yes, there are three sisters. Now she said there's a third because there are three people in that room. Like I said, you can see two women. I know they're pixelated, but you can see two women. And there is a third person kind of off screen. You can see their arm that appears every once in a while. It's an adult. And we also find out there's at least one child warning around there in the room. So when she says there's a third, so there's three of you right there. Then the girls, the sisters say, yes, there's three sisters. And then Suzanne says, right, there are three sisters. And um, she says, she starts in on you two are there. She says, are they, are you? you two are there and the third is not and they're like yeah no she's not here and they mean she's just not here in the room but Suzanne thinks she means she's dead so she starts talking to the sister who is dead who is not dead really she I mean boy did she blow it and nobody catches that well let me show you who caught it but the idea is, is that she says she's talking to a dead sister. She says, oh, yeah, she's telling me this and she's telling me that. And the sisters kind of awkwardly are like, well, she's not dead, you know? Oh, she just recovers. So let me show you what's next. Right, but I'm saying she's, she's talking about coming connected to your sister. Okay. So this double name thing is ridiculous because double name, what, what do you mean double name? 
that's how they tell me that they're coming through and all this all this nonsense how how odd is it for a family member to name a child or grandchild after another family member even if it's just a middle name i mean is that really all that strange no it isn't so th that was just like a common kind of tropey thing that suzanne says and it means dilly squat double names give me a break um and yeah did you hear that again how she's like well my sister's not dead now the, here here's the interesting thing this is a close-up of thomas john during that exact same exchange i think this is really interesting look at his face watch this happen and she's a pistol and a half because well you know i'm better looking than the both of you guys i just just giving you an fyi on that all right so so she we, she definitely is wants to hog hog the thing so he knew his child oh, well that she's blown it she has just started communicating with a dead person who is not dead and the sisters are going what the heck what do we do uh, i thought that was amazing just amazing but you saw how smooth that um she gets out of it she's she is smooth with a capital smooth <laughs> really she just goes they're like oh she's not dead she's like, oh i know but that's what they should do. she just like barrels right through it let's not mention it let's just move on and nobody raises that again okay so let's go we need to move on with her cold reading of these two sisters still here all right so there's a third sister she's there she's just not she's here she's just not with you guys right okay i just want to know because that's how your grandmother's sort of coming through very strong now I'm gonna I'm gonna take that to be either where she lived or where you lived. Where was it when we had the body of water in the back? There's a pond or a lake or something. It was a larger body of water. Is she talking about where she lives, or is she talking about where your mom connected to your mom? Yeah, she lived by a lake. Say that again. She lived by a lake. She lived by a lake. So is that where mom was raised, or is that was just where she was? No, where mom was raised. Okay. Because it has a lot of heart to me. When heart reads a lot of nostalgia, do you understand this? So this was a kind of like a big deal. Okay, so I'm going to repeat this sentence exactly how it was how she says it. Where was it that had a body of water in the back? There was a pond or lake or a larger body of water. Covers a lot, doesn't it? So she's saying. Uh, where was it that had a body of water in the back? A body of water. There was a pond or lake or a larger body of water. What would be a larger body of water? You mean like an ocean? That's pretty general. It sounds very specific. One of the... Remember that the psychic is not looking at a pixelated screen she can see these women and she can see if they look confused or if they look at each other like i don't really know how to answer that she can see and because she's very skilled at this she has the ability to be able to course correct as you saw how fast she can course correct and cover it so so if she had said is our pond and if if she sees their expression like oh yeah or or you know that kind of expression she knows or a lake oh or an ocean or whatever they respond very quickly but i don't know about you but there's an awful lot of ponds lakes or larger bodies of water in the world and somebody living near it wouldn't shock me at all and having a fond memory of being anywhere near a lake or body of water the sisters finally just kind of say yeah she lived by a lake which could mean a mile it could be yards away it could be several miles away it could be you know an hour drive i don't know it just the sisters are motivated to make sure that this reading happens so this grandmother's kind of like larger in life yeah yes and did you know grandpa because it looks like he passed before her yeah Okay, so who had the old piano in the house? 
Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. That would be the other side of our family. Uh, so that's that side then? Yeah. If I ramp my head up, we're Like not we Yeah, I know exactly what they are. Okay. So where's dad then? He passed away. Okay. He's coming through Lou and the grandfather. He's identified by the piano. Okay. Hey. So grandpa dies first. She states that. Now she got that right. What are the odds that a man would die before his wife, especially after she's gotten through her childbirth years and that really risky point of time when women are giving birth, and especially since it's their grandfather, which would probably be maybe born in the 1930s, 1940s. So if the grandma has lived long enough to produce grandchildren, it's likely that he is going to die first. So that's just the odds. All right. So he got the grandpa died before grandma. Who had the old piano in the house? So that is his, that is a direct quote. Who had the old piano in the house? All right, viewers, raise your hands. Anybody out there who has someone who has an old piano in the house? Okay, keep looking around. We have Lily, Stephen, you know, they, Joey, yeah, Lily, one, Mark, yeah, Morden, yeah, 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 I, yeah, Adrian, yeah. See you all out there looking intently. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, leave your comments in the, I want to see somebody who doesn't have somebody living or dead you've met or have never met that someone had a piano in their house this is one of these very very uh common things i've seen tyler henry and i've seen uh don edward and i think i've heard other mediums use this line too because pianos were actually very common in houses or in churches or someplace where you you would have people singing school so pianos people were it was common but she does mention in a house uh the there's quite a long pause while these sisters kind of look at each other and say okay um and so they had to go to the other side of the family which was kind of odd because i mean she'd been talking about the mother's side of the family so now we had to go to the father's side of the family and they did have some, they came up with somebody, how nice of them. And they had an organ, which is not a piano. So they did what they could to make this fit. And they did, they made it fit. Go back. Okay. And so uh, he's telling me what month are we in? Well, October, something's coming up connected to either him or somebody within the family, somebody's birth or passing or something he's telling me. December, my dad passed away. Okay, so he's telling me he must have passed before the holiday. Right before. Okay. And did you celebrate? We did. Good, because he would have yelled at you if you didn't. Yeah. Holiday was like, was everything. The holidays were everything. I'm going to read, I'm going to read this quote again. This is a direct quote. Something is coming up connected to either him or somebody within the family, somebody's birth or passing or something. I, I just can't even believe that these people, these mediums get away with this. And people leave reading saying, oh, that was, they were amazing. They got all sorts of information. They could, there's no way they could have known this. I mean, just think about what that is. Something is coming up connected to either him or somebody within the family, somebody's birth or passing or something. So the sisters say he passed in December. All right. So then Suzanne says he must have passed before the holiday. Now the holiday I, she's referring to, I assume, is December 25th, which is Christmas Day. So... If he passed before the holiday, that would mean December 1st to December 24th. So 24 days. And that if we count 
how many days are after? So 25th, 26th, 27th, 28th, 29th, 30th, 31. So seven days. So the odds are that out of a month of 31 days, he she's just got 24 days versus seven to be correct with that statement. And she just so happened to be correct. But then again, you're playing the odds. It's pretty likely. And if she had messed up and he was born and he died on the 30th of December, she just played off and it wouldn't, it wouldn't have been anything. It'd be like, oh yeah, well, okay. It was really close to the holiday. And, you know, so, so the whole, she's just very glib about how she, she, I don't, how do I say this? I, I need you guys to understand that this mediumship is a skill. You've done thousands of readings over decades. All of this comes out really fast and just like, like a right off the top of your head, you're not, she's not really thinking about this. It's just you out. And she's done, um, probably said lots of these same phrases over and over and over and over again. So looking at just one reading like this, it may seem like, wow, she is amazing. But when you think about like somebody who's been in the business, a certain kind of business for 40 years and you're working with the public all the time and you're always talking, you tend to say the same thing over and over again that has been successful for you in the past, like a salesperson or if you're working in the health field or whatever, it might feel really fresh and new to the person who's hearing it for the first time. But to the person who's, you know, giving out the information, vomiting up the comment, it is, it, it's, what I always say, you know, it's like, oh, well, I always say that. So just because you're not around when I say it doesn't mean that I'm not good at saying that same phrase in this situation again. Let's move on. Now, he's telling me one of you are wearing, unless it's mom, something around the neck connected to him. He's got his sliding green. Good. Well, he's glad she's did it. He's a real ball buster, isn't he? I'm <laughs> There's nothing shy about this dude. It's yeah. Yes. Um, he, he uh, two things. So he loved his girls because that's how he makes reference to all of you. I, mu I must tell you. Um, he has his, he has the hat that he wears all the time on his head today. So I just want you to know you would not recognize him without that hat on his head. Okay. And he says he wants to thank every one of you because you must have been 24 7 with him during the end. And he says he knows how hard it was for all of you. But he says, they're my girls and they went beyond the call. And I, I want you to say that this was a very dignified man. And when he got to that point, you got to know how hard it was for him to have you see him that way. So he really wants you to know that, um, that he wants you to remember before that happened. Do you understand? Yeah. He doesn't want you to remember that, that, that awful place that like, that's the bad place. He goes, let's not, let's not go there. All right. Wearing something around the neck or mom. So one of the girls or mom is wearing something around the neck that was personal connect that was connected to him. Connected to him could be anything. So I think that seems very specific. He did not, she did not say your dad says that you and naming the daughter that he's talking to is wearing his wedding ring around your neck. He did not, she didn't say that. She said, Dad says, one of you or your mom is wearing something connected to him around his neck. So those are totally different statements. I'm sure those women are going to are gonna remember this later and say, hey, the medium said that Joni over here was wearing dad's wedding ring around her neck. Now, remember that Suzanne has done thousands of these readings, and I think she's probably found that it's very common for somebody who's greeting uh, and greedy enough that you would want to come to a mediumship event like this, that you would probably, um, I mean, it's not like she's going to throw away her dad's um, jewelry or something very personal to him. A lot of people will wear it because it's close to their heart. So I think that's just a general statement. Um, it's a clever statement. It sounds very specific, but I think that this is probably something that, that um, Suzanne is comfortable saying. The my girls, okay, that was an interesting thing. He says, these are my girls. 
Now, what are the odds that if you are a father of three daughters, that you would call them my girls? That would never happen, right? No, never. I can't even imagine that a father would ever raise three daughters to adulthood and call them my girls. So these are just very general statements. Now, this other thing, I hope I didn't play it too far. I need to say that this was a very dignified man. And when he got to that point, you got to know how hard it was for him to have you see him that way. So he really wants you to know that um, that he wants you to remember before that happened. Do you understand? Yeah. He doesn't want you to remember that 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 awful place. That like that's the bad place. He goes, let's not, let's not go there. Okay. So what I want to point out with that is that um, there's people are on the screen are crying. It's a very emotional moment where the they're describing how the children the daughters helped out the father and he doesn't want to be remembered in that way and they were such good daughters and everybody's crying so anybody to say this is entertainment is full of crap i'm sorry this is not entertainment watching people's grief be exploited like this um and their memories are being manipulated with so suzanne says death the bad place and let's not go there. Dad doesn't want to talk about it. You know why dad doesn't want to talk about it? Because Suzanne has no idea how dad died. She has no clue. So you see this you see this happening in some of the videos with with uh, and some of the readings that mediums do when they're cold reading and they do not know the cause of death is they'll say, he doesn't want to talk about it. He doesn't want to go there. Or she doesn't, she, she'd rather you remember her in another way. So she doesn't really want to talk about it right now. Why? Why, why didn't she want to talk about it? If she's really communicating with you, it just seems silly. No, it's because the medium has no idea. So let's just move on. Well, let's talk about something else because we, I don't know the answer. Um, you notice that these people don't have to ask questions. Mm -hmm. Um, now, this next part is really, really interesting. Uh, I'm interested in what you guys think in the comment. Okay. So, before we go any further, when I ask Thomas to sort of come back here, I, 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 you got to patronize me. <laughs> okay. Is there bears connected to you guys at all? <laughs> That's my mom's new dog that she got. Thank you. I knew they were going to make me nuts if this didn't come through because I said, it's got to be the next one. I must have been, I must have been watching. I was supposed to, because your, your dad's telling me that he comes around the dog. <laughs> oh, yeah, Mary, that's the dog. Seeing the dog wag the tail or doing the something and there's no one there, it's your dad. Yeah, big German shepherd. If you look, that would have been my dad and dog. <laughs> so he's very, very pleased about this. We got it. Very, very cool. Okay, so part of the video that I did cut out because it was in another part of the uh, another person's reading is she, she was talking a lot about a dog, uh, a bear. She says there's going to be a bear that shows up. Somebody's name is Bear or a bear, a physical bear. I don't know why she can't tell the difference between somebody's name and a bear. But anyway, so she's been talking about it for a while now. Finally, she found somebody who was going to respond. The dog's name is Bear. I'm not giving that as a hit to me. It's just like another general statement, just like the piano. Something you say, eventually somebody's going to, to seize on it and they're going to make it hit. Because she she could have said, um, your, your mom has a German shepherd that she calls Bear. But no, she says, do you have any connection whatsoever to a bear? And the sisters already know that Suzanne's been talking about this bear as an animal or as a name or something from earlier in the session with the other sitters. And this idea that when the dog is wagging its tail or doing something when there's nobody there or something's happening, that's your dad. So are you trying to say that's a reincarnation of your dad or 
I mean, it's just a silly statement. So the dog, it barks at something and nobody knows what it's barking at. It's barking at dad. I mean, just, I, I don't like these kinds of things when the psychics do this stuff because it seems really funny and like a platitude and everybody's happy about it at the moment. But the idea that, that this mother who's going to move on in her life, maybe have other relationships with people or other things happen, that the, the dad is like there watching. It's just kind of creepy. It's just kind of that icky feeling that that now mom can't really move on. I mean, I'm sure they're going to joke around and say, oh, yeah, look, the dog is barking at, at something and there's nothing there. Oh, it must be dad. I don't know. To me, I don't know. Too, it's weird. So. Um, one last thing, and I don't know if Thomas wants to add two cents here. Do you know why your dad would talk about school for one of you guys? That he, his goal in life was just to put us through college, and if we never used it, at least we'd add it to all that. Right. Good. So he doesn't have to come and kick you in the rear end. We don't have to do any of that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so that's that's very, very cool. Um, he One last thing here. He wants to thank you for continuing to give mom flowers because even though he's not here, you've done it. Yeah, my my sister does that and we add in a maid because they share that on every anniversary. Okay. Yeah, exactly. holiday. Is that the one that's not here and that he was talking about then earlier? No, this this one. Oh, this one. Okay, got it. Okay. So dad thanks you for, for filling in his part. So did you catch that? Um School is important to dad or one of them. Okay. Duh. And he wants to thank her for the flowers. And that was really, a, it feels like a really big hit. But again, like I said, Suzanne's been doing these for years. That's a common thing. I bet you she says it a lot of the time. And it's probably, she says it because it probably looks like a, a hit each time because um, I believe that that is probably uh, when dad dies, mom's still alive, somebody gives her flowers like as if they came from dad on an anniversary or whatever. I think that that is probably more common than you would think. My family didn't do it, but I'm just one person. I don't know if that's common in other families. Please leave me a comment in the um, under this video. I'm curious. Is that something that your family or families that you know of do, especially in a year or two or three after the death of somebody? Is it likely for your family member, somebody to see that the widow is receiving flowers? I'm curious. Also, she says, the woman, they are two sisters. So one of the sisters says, yeah, dad told me to make sure that we do this on the anniversary. And Suzanne said, Oh, is that the other sister that's missing? The one that's gone, that's not here? I mean, this woman is right there on the video said, this dad told me to do it. So I've been doing this on the anniversary. And Suzanne is like, well, I guess it was the other sister. And she's like, no, I just said it. it's me. And the one sister goes, this one right here, this sister. So Suzanne was not paying attention right there. So I'm, I want to pause for a second just to say, What's missing? This is like one of my big things. And, and if you follow my channel, which I hope you're doing and you're subscribing, please subscribe, you guys. I really would appreciate that. If you um, leave comments and hit like, I would appreciate that as well. Really, I really would. Like, I really, really appreciate that. So what's missing? If you watch a bunch of my videos, you know I'm going to say that. What is missing? Well, like everything. Um, why are we playing these games where he's like, well, who is this? What happened with that? And those kind of things. Just be specific. I mean, you're talking to dad, right? You're talking to grandma. You're talking to dad like right now. So why don't you call me by my name? You know, the sisters, why are we naming them? Why are we naming the grandchildren? Why are we not talking about where they are or some like advice, some like real advice, um, you know, just about life in general. I don't know. Could dad see the future? Can he advise? Can he do some of these other things instead of talking about a piano or somebody who had a piano 
and that there's a dog named Bear and there's a pond. I mean, how about like something conclusive, something better? I I think that would make sense. Just me. Okay. We're coming to the very end. This is where it gets really good. All right. So we're going to go to Thomas John. He's going to weigh in. What do you think he's been doing for the past eight minutes on here? Especially since he's known who these women are. So come on now. What do you think he's going to do? You know what he's going to do. All right. Thank you. You're very, very welcome. Um, I'm, I'm already, I'm, I'm, unless you have the two cent thing, Thomas. Is there, are there grandchildren, Ashley? Are you trying to unmute yourself? Yes, there are. Okay. So do you have children? I have three girls. I was going to say, cause I was somewhere where I was getting three that were together, but they were under you. Like I knew you had the three cause you were talking about sisters. Was getting a set of three girls, three holidays. Oh, no wonder your father talks about the girls. <laughs> your guys are loaded. Yeah. He's getting a baseball team. <laughs> Our ring room. So um, I, I wanted to kind of I pause on a should have. This dynamic with Suzanne, this is old school, um, decades long. She had her fame as. Uh, a TV show, oh, in the 80s, I think, maybe early 90s, uh, The Afterlife Experiment, I think is what it was called. And so she's had her fame years ago. And so she's staying relevant with these readings here and there, but she, her fame has never been anything like it was when she had that TV show, one season canceled, I believe. And I think she had a short run to something else canceled. And she was a big deal back in the day. Not so much now. So Tom, being with Thomas Don, why? I don't know. I don't know why he's having her on. She has a reputation. Maybe she has a following. Maybe she asked. Maybe there's, who knows what, why, why he's doing it. But I personally, personally, I think that it's likely that he, he likes to have her on because she's confident. She's kind of funny. She's got that glib quick wit and a he allow when she's doing a reading it allows thomas all kinds of time to be able to go and look onto these other people's social media i think suzanne thinks she's got to prove something because you'll see in the whole when you look at it as a whole all of the readings which we're not doing right now which is why i like to look at a lot of readings at once and break them down into individuals you see the dynamics and it feels like suzanne is like has something to prove like, I'm still relevant. I, I, I bet this person. I found it before you, Thomas John. It's kind of a com competition. And Thomas John's like, eh, she's just funny. I'm just going to keep her here and have it here. Because this is Thomas John's event. This is his assistant. So I think that's what's going on. I don't know. But we'll see. So as I said, Thomas John's been busy, right? We know he's been busy. So he said, um, do, you, are there th do you have three daughters? Do you have, um, there's more girls and then this clip by Suzanne. Oh, you guys got a bunch of girls. Well, six girls is not a baseball team. But this is what I found on Ashley's Facebook page. Because remember, I can see her Ashley's Facebook page because I know who she is. Read little girls. And I pixelated them even though it is just showing their back. So that wasn't hard for Thomas John to find. It was super easy for me to find. Like, it's her profile picture. It's Ashley's profile picture on Facebook. It is the first thing you see when you go to her Facebook page. So three little girls, really? Okay. All right, Thomas, that was, that was hard work. What happened with, um, why would he talk about <clears throat> um, um, cancer and he's saying that he was uh, sick for, for he says about nine months, and he's also talking about um, something with um, where where it would have gone into the pancreas. Yeah, and he died of pancreatic cancer, um, technically a year from when we found out. Okay. 
but he says it was really bad for six months. And I do feel like I need to tell you that um, he just wants to communicate that he is out of pain. Um, he is not, he's not suffering, you know, um, and he is, he's, uh, he wants to just really just send a tremendous amount of love towards you, um, at, you know, as, 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 you know, towards that. And, and so I just, I feel like I do need to just let you know that he is, he is in a good place. And I feel like, um, he's definitely around your, there's one of your daughters he's super connected to. He's connected to all of them, but one of them is really very connected to him. Yeah. 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 I think that you're watching with us. <laughs> oh, great. Okay. Okay. Many blessings. Hey, we're good. Thank you so much. Welcome. Get it when they sing the law of a child and tell me some this is a lot. One child, he's really connected to this child. You're favoring one child, which means that the other children are not going to feel as connected to grandpa and, and singled out as well. Why don't you tell us her name? Just tell us her name. Which one is it? So, uh, and then the mother's like, oh, she's been right here. It just feels ugly because you're manipulating the memory of this person. You're manipulating how relationships proceed in the future. And to know that one daughter, granddaughter, is going to be favored by dead grandpa who's watching over her. That's not creepy at all. But this idea that one is favored and the other two are not. I don't know. That bugs me. It bugs me. I don't know if it bugs you or not, but it bugs me. Another thing that bugs me a lot is whenever Thomas Don is looking at people's Facebook pages like this. This is from Ashley. Now, this is June 25th, 2020. You always have to check to make sure that the post was up on Facebook before the reading they're given. And it says here, the Chicago Pancreatic Cancer Action Network, we're all going out this Saturday for our Purple Stripe at home event. And she says, we walk in honor of my dad, Greg. Is right there and after october 1st after this reading i found other posts about pancreatic cancer i think if i spent some time i'm sure i would have found a lot more posts about pancreatic cancer and the father dying and how long it was and all that i mean i'm looking at this in 2023 this reading was in 2020 i didn't have any problem finding these posts but imagine looking on october 1st 2020 how easy it would be to find these posts. Now, people watch these videos. I have had people watch these videos and say that they're turned off by my attitude, that I'm not open to this, that um, I am a bit condescending with my voice, that he's trying to help these people and how dare I take away the joy of and, and the peace of mind that, that he's giving these people, Suzanne and him, he's getting these poor grieving people. And um, I've, and I've been called salty several times. So I guess it's the word of the day of 2023 is to be salty. I don't get it. I don't get why lying to people, manipulating their emotions is like, is, is that a thing? Is is this like where we're supposed to be today? Is we're supposed to just pretend that somebody like Suzanne and Thomas John are helping people? Because I don't know about you, but I don't think that's help. And now they've got this little girl who's been watching this the whole time who's going to think she's special and her sister is not special to grandpa. Um, now they've raised her. They're raising her in the same mentality that this is real and that grandpa's watching and and that you know you really can communicate with the dead and all this other nonsense i guarantee you that these women these two sisters left this reading and said not only did dad come forward and talked about him having pancreatic cancer which is really kind of weird how we say 
oh, he's at peace now, or there's no pain. Really? Do you think that if there was life after death that, and and you had a heaven of some sort or whatever it is that Thomas John alludes to that dad is at, that there would still be pain from cancer? And that here's this... I, I just don't... That here it is, you know, uh, the daughters are going to say that he knew, the media knew, Suzanne knew that the grandpa George played the organ. And he and Suzanne knew, the media knew that we lived by the lake and that dad passed, before, you know, right around Christmas and knew that we still had Christmas and that he called us my girls. He gave us all the nicknames. And so as the women are retelling the stories, because we're humans that we like to communicate, we want to embellish the story a little bit more to make it a better story. And also to make it look like it was much more accurate than it was, because we don't want anybody to think that it was vague and that we fell for it. No, no, the story is going to get more specific and names are going to be used. All, all of that that was given to them is going to be communicated to all their family and their other sister and everybody else and to mom about how she knew that the dog's name was Bear, that he, there was a German shepherd and, and all these things are going to be communicated that way, which perpetuates these readings because now they're going to say, oh, it was the best. It was amazing. There's no way in the world anybody could have, have known these things. I hope that you guys watching this, I know, I know I come across as condescending and I have a bit of an attitude, but it's so difficult for me to watch these things, even though I do it, somebody's got to watch it and explain it. I think it's valuable. I think it's really important that you understand that what's going on, there's a lot of psychology happening and there's a lot of motivated sitters who you badly need to believe this. And I think that we 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 do a disservice to this actual skill of hot and cold reading. And I think we do a disservice to the people who are listening, who are in this emotional state, who want this to happen. That they really badly want this to um, uh, be in contact with their loved ones. We, we really need to remember that we can all be fooled. This is, these people are in a vulnerable state and they might not have fallen for this before, but there are tricks and methods that are happening that until we sit there and examine it, like we just did in this last hour, the detail that's in there, I don't think that people understand they just go, oh, well, he's just throwing out letters of the alphabet. And oh, he's just doing this thing over here. And oh, they do that. No, there's a lot of nuance to it. There's a lot of skill and there's a lot of manipulation. So I hope you learned something. I learned something every time I did this. Every single time I see some other new method or some way of, you know, going around it. And you got cold and hot reading on this one. And I think contrasting the two is really fascinating and I think that it's just something we need to be educated about and I hope you guys find this interesting please like and share I really would appreciate it thanks everybody